Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I'm doing some Wi-Fi upgrades around the house. I've got a bunch of Wi-Fi 6 access points from Unify at the moment, and I'm going to be slowly replacing them with Wi-Fi 7 units, starting with this one that I've got down here in the studio with me. This is the new U7 Lite. I will unbox it in real time here. And this is, as its name suggests, a Wi-Fi 7 access point. This is their lowest cost version. I like these inexpensive ones. It's $99, so very reasonable. And although it doesn't have a lot of the high bandwidth features of the more expensive units, for what I do down here with Wi-Fi, it's going to be fine. And I'm curious to see how much better Wi-Fi 7 will be by installing this in the same spot that my Wi-Fi 6 access point currently operates in to see if I can get more bandwidth out of one of these low-cost devices. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the access point here with my own funds. However, the router that we're connecting it to, the Unify Dream Machine Pro, was sent to the channel free of charge about five years ago, but it's been running great ever since. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. This is not a sponsored review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what kind of performance upgrades I can expect from the new U7 Lite. Now, from a hardware standpoint, this is very similar to the prior edition Lite models. So you could, for example, swap out their older AC Lite for this one because the bracket it uses is the same. So it's a simple swap in and out kind of scenario here. They do give you all the mounting hardware in the box along with a template and leveler here for getting everything situated. But again, if you've got existing light access points from Unify, it should be as simple as just taking the old one out and snapping this one into the same bracket. At least that's what I'm gonna do. Now this does have 2.5 gigabit ethernet. The prior versions only had one gigabit. Conceivably, we might be able to exceed gigabit speeds with Wi-Fi 7. Now this one is a little more limited in its radio bandwidth though, so it's only got a two by two radio on the five and 2.4 gigahertz frequencies. There is no six gigahertz support on this one. And for me, that's not such a big deal because I don't have a lot of Wi-Fi usage in the house. I'm not running an institution here, just a house with a wife and two kids. So we're not using that much Wi-Fi bandwidth. This access point usually just serves the computers and other devices that I'm using down here in the studio. So I don't need all that much radio bandwidth here to play with. If I was living in an area where I had much more Wi-Fi interference, like a city or a very dense uh, uh, suburban area, then the six gigahertz band does make some sense to have on your access point, which again, this one doesn't have. But where I am, I'm in a rural area. I'm not gonna get a lot of interference and I think this will be more than adequate and hopefully a nice little boost in bandwidth once we get it all hooked up. So pretty simple here. Just connect it up to PoE and you're good to go. It does require PoE. It doesn't come with an injector in the box, but I will be connecting this to the PoE Unify switch that I reviewed about two weeks ago. So it should be a pretty simple swap out here. Now, before we do that, why don't we run some iPerf tests on my iPhone to the current access point so we'll have something to compare it to when we install this one. Let's get to that and then we'll get this thing hooked up. So we've got my iPhone 16 Pro Max now connected via Wi-Fi via the existing U6 Lite, which is the Wi-Fi 6 version of this access point. And we're gonna run this iPerf test and this will be pulling data from the iPerf server that I have in my house. And this server is running on a 10 gig network here. And as you can see, I'm able to download at about half a gigabit per second, a little bit under that, but not bad here as you can see. And this is the kind of performance you would expect out of the lower end Unify access point. I do a little bit better on the more robust enterprise one that I have elsewhere in the house. And of course, if you have a more robust client radio, you can make use of a four x four connection, for example, and pull more data. What I'm gonna do now is reverse the connection here. So we got about half a megabit or half a gigabit per second on the downstream. And now we'll do the upstream test here where we do a little bit better, uh, close to 600 megabits per second, but in a similar range. I also ran the test on my Windows PC a few minutes ago and got very similar results. So now we've got a good baseline here for what we're getting with Wi-Fi 6. And now we will do the upgrade and see what we end up with with Wi-Fi 7. All right, so it took all of 30 seconds to install this thing. I just untwisted the old one and twisted in the new one. It's already up there in the ceiling, as you can see. And I already got a notification on my Unify control panel here. So I'm just going to click on Add. And this will add the access point now to my network. It's going to adopt it here. 
and it will run with all of the default settings for the Wi-Fi networks that I've previously configured on my Unify network. That's how easy it is to get this stuff up and running around here. Uh, what I'm going to do is wait for the firmware to finish updating here and getting everything all integrated, and then we'll step through some of the configuration settings to make sure I've got this thing tweaked the way I want to. So let's let that firmware update finish up, and it will be then part of my network. All right, so everything now is configured. My iPhone is connected to the new access point. I can also confirm that we've connected with Wi-Fi 7. You can see here 2x2 Wi-Fi 7. Now, I haven't changed anything else with my network yet. I've left everything on the default setting. So I just want to see if I get an immediate improvement in performance. So we'll go ahead here and initiate the download test. We'll run it for 30 seconds here. And sure enough, it looks like we're doing a little better here. We're in the 700 megabit per second range, which is a nice improvement over what we saw earlier. I'm gonna stop this and run it in the reverse direction and see what we get there. And there we're about where we were before, so not um, as good as the downstream was, but certainly it's doing pretty well either way. So it looks like this was a good improvement right out of the box, but there are some things that I could probably tweak here to improve performance. So why don't we experiment with a few of the new settings that I've got and see what kind of performance gains we get from that. So I'm gonna select my new access point here from the list and I'm going to go over to the gear icon on the right hand side of the screen. And before my maximum channel width was 80, but I can now go up to 240. Now this is gonna present a bit of an issue depending on your configuration because if you use that much channel bandwidth, you might have interference with your other access points that are on your network, especially at five gigahertz. But because I don't have many clients on this at all, my house is pretty quiet right now. I'm gonna try this for the heck of it and see what happens. So I'm gonna say 240 and I'll click apply changes. Now remember my iPhone here is just a two by two radio. It may not be able to take advantage of this added bandwidth, but after this change takes effect, let's see if we see any difference in speed now on the phone. And after this, I've got one more thing we can try out. All right, after that reconfiguration, my iPhone has connected with a 160 megahertz wide connection. So it's not quite 240, but that might be the maximum that this phone can support. So now what we're gonna do is go back to my iPerf test here and see if we can push some more bandwidth on this wireless connection. And sure enough, look at that, we're able to get almost to a gigabit. I think we might cross the barrier there, maybe not, there it goes. So yeah, it looks like that made a big difference here in its performance. And this is pretty good for a two by two radio. The Enterprise Edition, which we tested the Wi-Fi 6 version of last year, certainly can get to these speeds with that uh, larger radio. But here on the Light Edition now, we're pushing a gigabit at least on the downstream. So why don't we swap out our test here and go for the upload and see if we get better performance there. And yeah, we're doing a little better there. It's still struggling a bit on upload. It could just be the nature of the phone here, but this is a nice little improvement. So not bad there. Now, the next thing I wanna try out is something called multi-link, which is a, a new thing that Wi-Fi 7 can do. So typically on your Wi-Fi network, you have all of your networks segmented by frequency, six gigahertz, five gigahertz, and 2.4. Wi-Fi 7 allows you to have a single connection over multiple frequencies. Now again, this one's only got a 2.4 and a five gigahertz radio, but we can aggregate those together and presumably push more bandwidth out of it. I have configured that. Let me show you what I did and then we'll do another test on our phone. So in my Unify settings here, I created a new network for Wi-Fi 7 access points that I have in the house. Right now I've only got one of them. So I just added the Wi-Fi 7 one to that list. So right now, this new SSID is only available to my new Wi-Fi 7 access point. I am allowing this to work on 2.4, 5, and 6. Even though I don't have 6 on this particular access point, if I get a new one that does, it will allow that frequency with that SSID. And what I enabled for this network, and this option apparently is only going to show up if all of the access points are Wi-Fi 7 compatible, is this new option here called MLO, which is multi-link operation. I think that's what it stands for. And when that's checked on, what's gonna happen here, presumably, is that it's going to aggregate the 2.4 and the five gigahertz together to get us a little more bandwidth. And this is part of the Wi-Fi 7 standard, so your equipment on the client side is supposed to support it. So what I'm gonna do real quick is switch this iPhone 
over to this new network that I created. Let's see what it's reporting as when it does get connected, and then we'll run another bandwidth test. All right, so according to my control panel here, my iPhone is currently connected to both the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz network. I did set the 2.4 to be 40 megahertz wide, but it's sticking to 20. So I don't know if that's some limitation of this iPhone's client radio, but either way, we should see a little bump in performance here using both of those frequencies, presumably. So why don't we go ahead here and hit the start button and see what kind of performance we get. And it's not much better. In fact, we're taking a performance hit here. So this might require a little more tweaking over time. So right now, at least, it looks like doing the 160 megahertz wide single channel connection made more sense than having this MLO connection put together. But let's let this finish running itself out and then we'll run the test in the opposite direction and see if the upload is any better. But I'm not seeing the performance I was expecting here, uh, but this is a newer technology. Let's go on the upstream and see what we get there. And it's about the same as what we had earlier, maybe a little better. We're getting close to 700 megabits per second. So it is, you know, what it is. Unfortunately, it's not what I thought it would be, aggregating both of those connections together. This might need a little more time to tweak, but we'll get there. Why don't we take a look at some latency now for ping rates, and then we'll close out. So we're going to start our ping test here in the MLO configuration. That's using both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz connection. I did drop a couple of packets there, as you can see. And it's hovering between like 7 to 10 milliseconds most of the time. So not bad, and that is what we got there. Let me switch back to the traditional Wi-Fi 7 network and see what our latency is with that. All right, so now that we're connected back to the traditional Wi-Fi 7 network, again at 160 megahertz, I am seeing ping rates that are a little better here, mostly in the 8 to 7 millisecond range. So slightly better latency here and certainly better bandwidth. So for now, I'm going to disable the MLO feature, but I will revisit it as I get more laptops and other computers in for review that might have more robust radios or radios with more up-to-date firmware. I think this MLO thing is still in its early days. And the reason why I just spent most of this video with my iPhone is that currently this is the best Wi-Fi 7 radio I have in the house. So I will revisit this at some point, and I'm sure this video will generate a lot of discussion as well. But it looks as though getting a nice wide 160 megahertz uh, Wi-Fi 7 channel set up here did make a big difference in bandwidth. I am able to get slightly above a gigabit, so I'm pleased with the performance boost that I'm seeing out of this, and I might get a new access point for my upstairs area that gets more of the household traffic that might have a wider radio in the near future, so we can keep testing this further. But all in, a nice little bump in performance here with Wi-Fi 7, just like the bump we saw going from Wi-Fi 5 AC to Wi-Fi 6. So if you are looking to upgrade, these are very simple to install. They integrate into your network very quickly. And all in, another great little unified device here that is quite affordable. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.